If you like playing the Night Orb but find the Bishop G5 Roche annoying to face, then this is the video for you. They are going to see a very nice game between Serana against Alain Pichot in the Bishop G5 system. Because in the past, I used to play Queen B6 and Poison Pawn and know all the theory. But that takes a lot of work and a lot of memorization. Whereas Serana's Knight BD7 is a lot more systematic. Where if they play Queen F3, we can go Queen C7. We're preparing the move of B5. So that if they play E5 and go for this, we just go Bishop B7 and just take the pawn and laugh in their face. But also, if they play a bit more quietly, like bishop to d3, for example, well, then we can just go bishop b7. And you're sort of noticing that white's not really managing to get in their usual g4 and g5 to attack the, the black position. Like, they'd have to retreat with bishop h4, but that's kind of slow. You could play queen g3, but then have b4 and, you know, where's your knight going here? You can sort of feel how white has to find some pretty good moves already. He's going to be in a worse position with white. Which is one reason you probably want to play the knight off to begin, right? Because you can actually fight for an advantage if White doesn't know what he's doing. And if you are enjoying the video so far, do make sure to leave a like and also to consider subscribing to the channel. That way, if you are already a subscriber, you can tap that notification bell, set the notifications to all. That will ensure you get my daily chess training video. Now, in the game, Fischer played the modern mainliner queen seat e2. This was popularized by uh, Negi in his old GM repertoire e4 walk from nearly a decade ago. And here, like, the normal approach would be to play something like g4, but the problem is b4 is coming. And if you move the knight to the edge, well, now this pawn comes under fire. This knight is out of play. And black position is already, I think, more pleasant here. I can even go e5 at some point if you want to stop them trying to push in the center. But, oh, well, yeah, black's basically just better if white just plays natural moves. So Pichot plays the move of a3. And here you might be expecting that black would just play, you know, something natural like bishop b7, bishop g b7, bishop e7, you know, something along these lines. You know, white can take, but, you know, you take back and, you know, you, you play chess, as it were. But this is kind of playing into white's territory. Instead, I find Saranda's move of rook b8 a lot more unpleasant. Uh, as the arrow kind of suggests, we want to go b4 and just open up the the white king using the hook created with a3. Um, the move playing the game of bishop h4 is probably not the most critical. A move like g4 is probably going to make a bit more sense here. And, you know, b4 is admittedly a little bit of a gamble at this point. Because when you play this, you are risking white playing knight d5, which I will admit looks very, very scary, this attack down the e-file. And, yeah, they can also play knight c6. And so this is kind of something you have to be a little bit careful of with b4 that, you want to make sure you time it correctly. So instead, you probably will want to play bishop e7 first and, you know, play b4 uh, you know, after a little bit of preparation. Like if they go bishop to g2, then yeah, now it, it works a little bit better like to play b4 at this point because, you know, knight d5 is it's just not working anymore now that the bishop is, you know, is going to be undefended and you know, we've got the elastic band and so forth. But if they have to take, we can't get something similar to the game. We get some good counterplay against the white king. Speaking of the game, let's see how it went. White played bishop to h4. Trying to be a little bit creative, prepared g4, g5. Maybe go f5 at the right moment. But black just goes b4. And suddenly white faces the question of, well, how are you going to deal with queen b6? Now, to be fair, queen b6 isn't that big of a threat. Because white does have knight b3 to block it. But, like, let's say you play a move like, I don't know, queen e1 for argument's sake. Like, you just want to develop the bishop. Well, you can sort of see how here, like, even a5, a4 is, you know, a way to try and get at that knight. And even if you just develop normally with something like bishop e7, bishop e7, castle, and then go for pushing the a-pawn, I mean, black's basically just better in this position. That's the, the beauty of this line. The black's moves are very natural and obvious, and we're giving white all of the tough decisions, which is exactly the kind of chess I love to play. You know, give them the hard decisions, make them sweat. In the game, white probably should have played the move of g4 here, but it's not so simple. Like, you know, the worst case, you can play h6 and, you know, discourage their g5 break. You know, even a move like g5 is kind of interesting, right? Where you can sack the pawn, but then get quite good play with the e5 outpost. But probably objectively, the best option is actually just to play the move d5, which might look a little bit suicidal, but you are 
you're meeting EF5 with Queen F4 and you, know, you are taking the knight. So there is a tactical justification in that sense. And, you know, if they play E5, you know, again, you can sort of see how the natural moves are actually just landing white in a lot of hot water here. Like, even if you're playing against a Grandmaster, I think that, you know, they're going to be sweating a bit at this point. Like, what they should do is they should play F5 and, you know, there's a lot more engine lines that ultimately end in, you know, in rougher quality, like white being a tiny bit better. But, yeah, it's, it's a pretty decent gamble, you could say, and you can see a few ways that you can play the position depending on your taste of, you know, what you kind of want. In the game, though, white played the move bishop e1, which is just a little bit too prophylactic for my taste. After queen b6, you know, how you defend the pawn. Like, if knight b3, well, if I want to, I can even just play h5 and just, you know, kill the idea of g4, be ready to meet e5 with take and, you know, swing the knight in. You know, that's why we played h5 to defend that way. And, yeah, it's just very hard for white to come up with a good plan, while black has, you know, all the ideas, all the, the ways to make progress. Instead, white played bishop f2, and turns out knight c5 is actually really strong here, but in the game, Serana played queen b7. Not not a bad move either. Um, the reason it's not as good as you are letting white go e5 and at least get, like, some play in the center. But instead, after g4, you know, black, you know, basically was end up doing quite well. Um, again, knight c5 in hitting the pawn is actually quite strong. You know, the bishop g2, rook b2, like, you're just not really that concerned about e5 because your attack is basically just quicker against a king is is the point serana played the move d5 in the game which you know white can play e5 and you know, try to get a good french structure which is why i'm not a not a big fan of this approach personally like you want to play d5 when they can't play e5 in response but instead i played bishop g2 which unfortunately is just a little bit of a mistake here um video just went really weird I was worried it was going to crash on me, but yeah, rook b2. And now, yeah, e5, queen b4. Again, we we kind of saw that working out for black already. And after e d5, bishop a3, like, we just have all the threats against the king, right? Like, if they play d6, well, I mean, we can even just play, like, uh, like rook takes c2, actually, is, is very beautiful. Where you get in this, and, like, this is... This didn't happen in the game, but imagine you're getting... A checkmate like king c4, queen b4 on the board. Or if they go king e3, yeah, they just have to give up all their pieces and you you just win, essentially. But, and that's actually, that is what happened in the game, funnily enough. Like, white 40 could play d6 and he just missed this whole thing. Uh, but yeah, white was already in a pretty rough spot, to be fair. Um, so the game ended queen rook d3. You know, black just traded into a winning end game. Like, take bishop c6 doesn't change too much. Yeah, if I plays king d3, knight f2, forking. The king and rook is the whole point. But after bishop g3, knight c5, black is simply a piece up. And after a few more accurate moves, he did indeed win. You know, white resigned as he is two full pieces down. So I hope that you enjoyed this video on the bishop, how to meet the bishop g5 knight off with this whole systematic knight d7 and going for developing the queen side before you develop the king side is the key salty to know. Let me know in the comments below, what was your favorite part of this training? You know, are you going to try this Knight BD7 system in your own games? Um, also, if you are wanting a little bit extra, I will point out that if they do play Queen F3, you can still play the same sub. It's still going to work pretty well, actually, except they're not even getting an F4, so it's like a worse version for white. But anyway, that's a more minor point for the more advanced players. So yeah, good luck with playing Knight D7 sub in your own games, and I will see you in the next training. Take care.